What's going on guys? In today's video, we are going to discuss environment variables. In Linux and Unix based systems, environment variables are just a set of dynamically named values stored within the system that are used by applications and commands launched by shells and subshells. In simple words, an environment variable is a variable that points to a value in our environment that will be of interest. We can take a look at all of our environment variables on the system with a simple command that will print them to the screen. That command is env. And you can see we get a whole lot of text that is listed here. Now, if env doesn't work on your system, there's another command you can do called print env. And print env can also be used to print specific environment variables. So, for example, if we just want to know what the user variable is, we can do print env user, and we get Kenny. That is the value for our user variable. But let's go back to taking a look at all of them. Now, the first thing that sticks out like a sore thumb is this big, obnoxious block of text here called ls colors. Now, this variable is pretty self-explanatory. So, it is the colors that show up whenever we do an ls. So, you'll see in my system here, JPEGs, they get kind of this purple color. Text files, they have this white color. Um, the executable files, they get this green color, directories have this blue color, and so on and so forth. And when we take a look at what's actually set inside of here, we can see that the syntax is essentially star dot file extension equals and then some numbers. Now, you should remember the star from some of my earlier videos you know that a star is a wild card. So whenever we see something like this, we know that star.mp4 applies to every single file, regardless of its name, that has the mp4 extension. So what this is saying here is star mp4 equals this first set of numbers, which I believe has to do with some stylizing for the text. So it has to do with uh, whether the text is bold or not, or whether it's italicized or underlined, anything like that. And then the second text that comes after the semicolon, the second number, this has to do with the actual color. So this number 35, uh, that just corresponds to some color. Uh, let me see, I don't actually have any MP4s in here, but let's see if we can find the JPEG, because I do have the JPEG in here. Um, let's see, let's make this a little bit easier to look at. Print env ls colors. And let's see. Do we see our JPEG? Uh, well, I'm not gonna spend all day looking for it. But anyway, oh, there it is. Okay, 35. So 35 basically just corresponds to this kind of off purplish looking color there. So let's bring back up our environment variables and take a look at some other ones. We have language, so our language is US UTF-8. This typically gets set whenever you're installing your system. Uh, we actually had to go in and set this manually in the Gentoo installation video that I did. Distros like Gentoo, they require you to set everything up manually, but in a distro like Linux Mint or Ubuntu, things like this would be set for you when you just pick the language out in the GUI box that it shows you. All right, when we come down a bit, uh, we see our user here, Kenny. Now, like I told you in the beginning of this video, these variables are dynamic, meaning that they can change. If I come over here 
and I were to spawn a root shell, and I printed out my environment variables again, you'll see that the user is no longer Kenny. The user is now root because it was actually my root user that ran this command. All right. Same thing with our present working directory. So this is an environment variable that we've actually worked with before. It's one of the first commands that people learn on Linux. So pwd just shows you the current directory, the full path of it that you are in. But if we were to go back a directory and then do print env, you'll see that now, uh, where was it? Present, here it is. Present working directory, you'll see that now it has been changed to this new folder because of course we are in this new folder. All right, so let's get back into our bash scripting folder. Now, we can set our own custom environment variables if we want. So you saw, for example, the present working directory. Uh, there's another one called home here which just refers to your home directory. It can be useful to set environment variables for directories that you frequently go to because you can access them in your shell through the environment variable. Let me show you an example of that with home. So right now you see that I'm currently in this bash scripting directory. Well, if I did cd into the home variable, which since it's a variable, we have to prepend it with a dollar sign and then type its name home. You could see that it just sent me straight into my home folder inside of home Kenny. So we can set that if we want to whatever directory we want. Now we're not going to actually change our home variable. We're going to create a new variable. So let's do one for my documents folder. Now the syntax to do this is just variable name equals and then my value. So in order to do this with documents, we'll give it a name and we want to give it something pretty simple. So we'll just call it docs equals and the location of my documents folder is home Kenny documents. And of course we have to put it inside of our double quotes. Now you see that I put it in all caps and that all these other environment variables are written in all caps. You don't necessarily have to do that. I could make this be lowercase dox, but I don't recommend doing that. And the reason why is because it's just convention to set your environment variables to all caps. There's not really much else on a Linux system that's gonna be all caps. So if you did that as lowercase and you're running a script on that system, the shell might get confused. It might think that lowercase dox is something else. So you don't have to make it caps, but it's just a good idea to make it caps. So we hit enter. And now this environment variable is set, meaning that we can go to it if we cd docs. And you see now I am inside of my documents folder. Now keep in mind when we set our environment variables in this way, they are not persistent. If I were to close out of these shells here and then pop another one, and try to cd docs, well, it didn't work. And it didn't work because when we set our variables that way, they only last for the current session that you are in with that terminal. So if I didn't close that terminal, docs would have still been an environment variable, it would have been an environment variable until the end of time, or at least until I close that terminal tab. If you want to set them permanently, you have to define them inside of your bash RC file. Now, we're not gonna go over that today because bash RC really can have a whole video unto itself. There's a lot of parameters to set in there, especially around how your shell actually looks because 
If you're on a different system, right now I'm logged into Linux Mint XFCE, you may notice that your uh, color and the way that all of this is formatted may look different. All of that is defined inside of Bash RC, which I'm gonna make a video about in the future. But for now, you guys learned about environment variables. I hope you're able to use this information to be more productive. Please leave a like on this video, subscribe, and share it with your friends you think might find it useful. Peace out.